ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Three Under Par podcast. This is a golf podcast where little white balls live. I'm your host Scotty T, and I'm joined by my co-host KJ down below, T Bone over there, rocking that Happy Gilmore background on Zoom. How's it going, boys? Never better. Chilling, baby. T Bone, why are you just now breaking out the Happy Gilmore background? I feel like you've been holding. I don't out. know. Yeah, uh, I've had just some pretty blank um wall backgrounds for the time being and it was time for a switch well overdue uh just like kj's new bandit hat yep fourth one was there this weekend it was pretty awesome it's good to be back home yeah you know the 3m open was this week so we're going to recap that um we were just kind of talking right before. We didn't really watch as much golf <laughs> this weekend, so maybe we'll share a little bit more of our personal golf adventures slash KJ's golf adventures over the weekend, probably on the back half of the episode. So uh, let's start off with that. Uh, actually, I'll have a question from a listener who sent it in. So before we dive into it, follow us on social media at 3 on Park Pod. You know the drill. Write us a review on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star rating as well. That would be great. And then tell a friend about the pod. If you're here on YouTube, glad you're here. Uh, Release the new video this week, the 18th hole challenge is what I was calling it. So it was essentially just you following me playing the 18th hole, seeing how I did. Guys, I don't know if y'all saw the first one, but I dropped a solid double bogey for the first <laughs> time releasing the video. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I thought about not posting it, but hey, we keep it real for the viewers out there. That's our goal, right? Oh yeah, I hundred percent would have, you know, placed that T ball right in the right in the middle of the fairway. That was me. <laughs> so I appreciate I appreciate that honesty. I don't know if I could have done that. Yeah, it got me like literally dropping it and whatnot. But it was one of those it was eighteen, of course, I was in Colorado at that time. So the elevation change was all weird and first time seeing the course, I didn't know how far out and it got pretty tight anyway. So I was like, I don't know what to do and I hit it pretty straight. The ball didn't really fade on me, but it just flew right into the crap, like almost hit a house. So it happens. That's a good cover up there though. You know, I wasn't sure about the elevation. I just bombed it down the middle. Didn't think it was, that, that's a good spin. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Sneak preview, got one dropping on Friday. I did better than a double bogey. So let's put it, I didn't make birdie, but I did better than a double. So it's baby steps, right? Nice. Baby steps. Man, so where do I want to start off? I uh, want to recap a little bit of the 3M Open, considering none of, none of us really watched it this week. I think that kind of sums up the weekend on the PGA Tour. Uh, a lot of guys skipped out this week. Um, since the PGA Tour has resumed play, they have. this was a week that a lot of guys are probably going to take off, uh, considering next week is the WGC. So, not as many big names, I feel like. Uh, Tony Fina was up there. Charles had third. Emiliano Grillo. But uh, I feel like the main story, the main takeaway of this was Tony Fina not being able to win. Unfortunately, the Puerto Rico curse is alive and well on the PGA Tour. KJ, if anybody wins the PGA Tour or wins a Puerto Rico, are they ever going to win again on the PGA Tour, you think? I, I don't know, man. At this point, I mean, you got to go with science and facts. So... Um, I, I know that I know it's golf and anything, but it ha- can happen. I accept ex- that. Maybe they, that might be the only exception to that rule. To put you guys on so, the spot, what are the other, who are the other people who fall victim to this curse? Let's see. Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. But this is, this is like the equivalent of a Madden curse. More or less. This Maybe not that extreme version of the Madden curse. Wow. That's a great take t <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, Tony Finau is one of those guys, God bless him. He's finished so close so many times. He only has one win on the PJ tour. That was the 2016 Puerto Rico open. I'm pulling up the winners right now. Let's see. Martin trainer, DA points, Alex Checa, Chesson Hadley, Scott Brown, George McNeil, Michael Bradley are your, last few winners yeah that That's, doesn't say that much <laughs> checks out i think i mean we gotta go we just we gotta go where the evidence points us. da points at his nice little run though you know he yes. was there for a while yeah he's won for a little he's won uh was it port uh pebble beach i think yep he won 
So, yeah, dude, Tony Finau. Now, do you know who did the defending champion of the Puerto Rico Open, who won it in 2020, right before everything shut down, was Victor Hovland. So I hope the curse, if anybody's going to break this curse, I think it's Victor Hovland. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried that that curse is going to hang on too long because uh, Victor Hovland, he's been, he's been showing some stellar stuff. And uh, at any point, he's going to bust through there. Yeah, I think we all agree Mark, Victor Hovland is the real deal. At least coming out, he looks really good. He just kind of has the, hi, just go lucky attitude. It looks like he's high all the time. But, <laughs> hey, maybe that's what you need in golf. <laughs> you have your Stone Cold killers like Brooks and then Victor Hovland. Yeah. Uh, I think he's been overshadowed a little bit with all the wolf hype. But coming out, you know, we all jumped on the Hovland train for sure. And Morikawa. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Morikawa's got two wins now on the PGA Tour. Pretty sick. Uh, yeah, I forget the stats exactly what it is on Tony Finau, but Tony Finau, I think he's finished in the top five like 30 times or something like that. And I think people are harping on him a little bit more this week because it was a lesser field, a quote-unquote lesser field. You know, you didn't have as many big names there. Brooks Kepka was there, but he didn't play very well. Shout-out to his brother Chase, who finished higher than Brooks Kepka did this week. No big deal. Wow. Yeah, pretty sick, right? If, any, uh, if Tony Finau was going to break through, I think this week was probably a good week. But, you know, he missed a couple of short putts. It just – it didn't feel like he was going to win. And, um, well, first off – we well, not first off. We failed to mention Michael Thompson comes away victorious this week at the 3M Open. Look, he's one of those guys that's been back and forth, you know, went back to the Corn Ferry Finals, got his card back. He's done that a couple of times. He's been living in that – 126 to 150 range on the PJ Tour rankings, which is just brutal. I don't wish that upon anybody, but somebody got to do it. Michael Thompson has. He, he's played well before. Like, I know we finished second at the U.S. Open in uh, 2012 at Olympic when Webb Simpson won. So, like, he's been around for a while, but DJ winning a couple of weeks ago, I think, is a bigger deal just because it's DJ. He's a big name. But this is actually a quote-unquote life changer for a guy like Michael Thompson. He doesn't have to live in that gray zone anymore. He gets job security for the next few years. So big shouts to Michael Thompson. He played really well. I want to give props to him on that. Yeah, no, again, I didn't really <clears throat> watch it at all, even in the slightest. But uh, one thing that I saw that was pretty cool was Michael Thompson used the putter that he bought when he was 16 at a Muni golf course in a pro shop and it was a, you know, old ping answer i think i think that's pretty cool love it love it that's the stuff that's relatable to the amateur <laughs> offers like that. just buying a ping answer when he was 16 in the pro shop and uses ever since dude i kind of love it uh i mean there were some fairly big names up there like max homa you know he's a friend of the pod well not friend of the pod he's roasted me on twitter before no big deal um so therefore kind of a friend i don't know max you're always welcome to come on let's put it that way uh, Charles Heller III, Alex Norin, Masters champion Charles Schwartzel. Uh, so those were kind of the bigger names. He Schwartzel's like hat. T-Bone, I wanted to ask you about that. Let's <laughs> jump to a little fashion corner with T-Bone. What did you think of Charles Schwartzel's wardrobe slash hat fashion this weekend? Did you see it? Oh, nope. Looking it up now. Look it up <laughs> because – He looked like a younger Greg Norman. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yikes he's Initial got the thoughts. michael kors logo and uh, <laughs> i mean i'm all for the straw hat um i, I think it's a great look but this is this is like this is straight like it just doesn't work for him i don't think he looks i don't know it's just weird. I, I had no prep. It's catching me off guard. I need, I need to chew on this one. Think about it. <laughs> Let but, us know uh, what you think. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Look, I feel like if you're a Masters winner, you can wear whatever you want. Like, do you feel like you get that pass? It's probably hot out there. He's trying to protect himself. I mean, KJ, you, you love the shawl hat. I got a shawl hat. Not afraid to break him out. Uh, it's kind of fun seeing a PJ Tour player wear it, though. I'm not going to lie. Outside of what's his face, Rory Sabatini, who just sucks. 
I yep. hate that guy so somebody much. Else rocking. <laughs> <laughs> that guy scares me. Yellow golf ball, always wearing, and it sometimes it's not even like a straw hat. It looks like almost cowboy hat-ish, and it's just it's awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, Michael Thompson comes away, shoots 64, 66, 68, 67. That is just so good. I mean, all those and guys. he wasn't doing anything on Sunday. Um, I did watch a little, little, uh, you know, probably about 30 minutes of it. And yeah. him and his entire group, nobody was under par through like eight holes. They, they, they turned it around. That was good for him. But, I mean, he started off just kind of doing nothing. Made one bogey and just nothing ever happened. Nothing ever panned out. And then turned it on. Yeah, I saw the scoring average on Sunday was 68. Like, I don't know much about TPC Twin Cities, but feels like a pretty gettable course uh, if the average score is 68. So you have to go low out there, man. You got to go low. And It was the third most birdies on the PGA Tour last year. Wow. Out of all their tournaments. Not surprising. Matthew Wolf, it looked like he was going to defend his title at one point, but he dropped down, still finished pretty solid. Let's see, T12 finish for Matthew Wolf. There was a nine-way tie for third. Like, I want to play out for that. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I feel like I haven't seen – I was looking at the leaderboard here and there on Saturday and Sunday. And with a couple of hours left on Sunday, I've, I don't remember a leaderboard I'd seen that packed with people two, one or two, three shots off the lead. It was like 20 people. Fina uh, was in that, that big yeah. group tight third as well. Yeah. yeah. Fina, Homa, Charles Howe the third. Uh, I think it's worth touching on. I don't really want to get into it though. Overall was Richie Warinsky. Not sure if y'all saw this, but uh, a little controversy came on for Richie Warinsky. Don't know much about Richie here, but he was wearing a blue lives matter bracelet um, at TBC twin cities, which is obviously the, epicenter of where so um, this is this is turning into a golf gossip segment it sounds like a little bit yeah uh (laughs) continue yeah and you know he's i don't really know what your opinions are on it but i just feel like it's at least worth mentioning um obviously what happened with the george floyd situation there is pretty terrible so it's just people were roasting him on it and you know i i don't really have much else to say on that just worth bringing it up because I don't think people really care about our opinions on much else besides golf. Cause we're here to talk golf and keep people entertained the entire time. Hopefully while you're listening to this podcast. So that's all I have to say about that. Unless there's anything else y'all would like to add no. for that. So, I mean, overall, I guess it was a good week for the PGA tour. Uh, like I said, probably feels like it was down a little bit. Baseball is back. NFL's in the news, the bubble was going on, the NBA, like sports are coming back. So maybe a, a down week, quote unquote, for the PJ Tour. But next week we have Memphis, which the tournament moving to Memphis overall is just a, you can have that discussion in and of itself. But bottom line, we got a WGC this week. It's at Memphis, the FedEx, the old FedEx St. Jude Classic. I forget what they even renamed it now. You know, sorry to that title sponsor, whatever <laughs> hashtag no free ads. But I expect the field to be pretty good uh, this week leading up. What do y'all think? Yeah, I hope to see Tony Finau at least compete in it. You know, I, 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 like the nicest guy on tour probably. Um, you know, that might be why we see him, you know, play well, but he doesn't really, you know, step on anybody and, uh, you know, have that killer instinct that, you know, I can win by three why am I not winning by six you know that's what I mean that's what you got to have to kind of seal the deal in golf just got to put it put the gas all the way to the floor just run over people you got to have that mentality that you can do it one thing about PGA Tour that I think starting to look uh, a little more promising than when it started was just the COVID situation in general looks like they're starting to get you know a pretty good grip on that and if you follow the MLB, it looks like that could be ending tomorrow with the Marlins <laughs> having 12 or 13 people True. testing po- positive. Basketball's kind of figured it out. But I think basketball's figured it out because there's a bubble. And the fact that you still have people traveling and they're not getting COVID, props to the PGA Tour for that. So we'll, yeah, uh, we'll yeah, see if they can keep it up. 
That's a good point, T-Bone. We haven't really heard much about COVID-19 on the PGA Tour recently. And that shows that whatever mis- – I don't know if mistakes is the right word or whatever was going on, the lack of processes that the PJ Tour had between Hilton Head and uh, up in Connecticut for the Travelers. It seems like they really tightened it up a little bit, which is good. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So when do y'all think Tony Finau is going to win next? Like I'm not getting a – I'm not asking for like a shot called like specific tournament, but do you think he wins within the next year? Or do you think is he ever going to win? There's gotta got to be somewhere in between, right? Got to be within the next year. How great would it be if he won next week, especially since guess what's also that week? Barracuda, that? baby. Barracuda. Now wins Puerto Rico <laughs> Open in the Barracuda Championship. He is officially canceled. For- <laughs> but they're, play- they're yeah. playing it the same week. Next weekend, Barracuda Championships going on as well. Um, also, the, the WGC next week is still called the FedEx St. Jude Invitational. So It's an Invitational now, not a Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Worth always worth noting. <laughs> That's okay. ridiculous. But yeah, so um I think he wins within two years. I don't know if he's gonna win this year, just because I think the fields are almost too stacked, if that makes sense, with all the majors and whatnot. It's gonna be just a full on sprint for the rest of the year. So I think if you give him – I think he'll win in 2021. Maybe not the, for, like, this year. Yeah, 2021, that's my prediction. I'm betting he wins the next six months. He's, he's been there too many times. Wow. Um, he's been there too many times lately to not win. Uh, but that's, that's just the problem with golf is you, you get that breakthrough, and I don't think there'll be, you know, any problem after the first one. But there's such – there's such a widespread of young talent and just talent overall. And then you throw in the factor of golf is impossible to be like consistent every single week in and out. It's, it's impossible, but he's playing well right now. I think, you know, one, one time next six months, stars are going to line for him. I hope so. Love the guy. Definitely. Definitely. So I guess we can give a little preview for the WGC FedEx St. Jude invitational. Boom. Got it. That time. I got some featured groups for y'all. They already came out. Some feature groups. Bryson DeChambeau, John Rahm, and Ricky Fowler. Webb Simpson, Roy McIlroy, Jordan Spieth. Patrick Reed, Victor Hovland, Brooks Kepka, which I believe Kepka won last year, if I'm not mistaken. Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, and Hideki Matsuyama. Hmm. And the first reply to this tweet is death taxes and Ricky Fowler is part of the PJ tour feature groupings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Shout out to Daniel Rappaport on that tweet, but yeah, yeah that's, that's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Poor Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's marketable, man. Even though he's yeah. out of the top 30 in the world, it's uh, it's all about marketability. And that, that is the definition of Ricky Fowler. I feel like not his golf, yeah. his marketability. Got to respect that. So, are there any – any? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, people are going to talk about Bryson. Bryson, let's see, can he continue to just bully golf courses or is he going to have a meltdown like he did uh, last – or when he was last appeared at Memorial, which we didn't even talk about this. How about his caddy trying to stand in between him and the cameraman? Like, what was that about too? Like, Bryson is just a nutcase. Uh, it seems like if he's got his head on straight, he'll be up there. But who, who else do you all like? Uh, for the tournament this week, I like uh, Morikawa. Always, the kid's nice. he's just too solid. Um, but you know, I, I would really love Finau to win. I really would. I keep on harping on it. Um, I I just feel like he's 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 been there too many times. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. Even with Bryson and all them in the field, um, I would love to see Colin Morikawa or Tony Finau to win. Love it. T-Bone, who you got? So I've ridden him a few times this season uh, since his pretty tragic, heartbreaking loss, but I think Xander's due. Um, he's just too good to um, – he's going to win at some point. He's Might starting as well to get, keep riding him. He's start, for me, he's starting to get into one of those uh, categories where his name sure. is bigger than his results. 
type deal. Could you know? be. You think Could so? Coming out, especially, especially, you know, going into East Lake, what was it last year or the year before? Like, the guy was just – he was either winning or he was getting I – mean, he, right, he was right there with the win almost every yeah. time. You know? Yeah, I mean, the hype is real – or I don't know if the hype is real, but there is a lot of hype because as of right now, he's, he's higher than Morikawa, um, Victor Hovland, <laughs> DJ, Fleetwood, Kepka. So, he's pretty high on the list with – um, with the favorites for this week, so something to think about. Well, 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 you're on. You're potentially on the list, Xander. So um, well, sounds like he's due for a win. Then partially not be. canceled is what you're saying. Yep. Yep. I don't think he's canceled. I don't think he's in the realm of being canceled. No, no, no way. I don't either. There. But at that one point, at that one point, I'm telling you, for like whatever it may have been, like four or five months stretch, it, every time he teed it up, I was like, that's who I'm going with. Yep. I like the guy. His swing. I think I, you remember me saying that on the podcast. Like his swing, if you could boil it down, there's not one golf swing, but if you boil it down to this is what a golf swing is supposed to look like, everything about it, he was right there. Mm-hmm. It was one of hey, my Jay, favorite swings on tour. Are you higher on Xander Shoffley or Joaquin Demon? Oh, bro. Uh, yeah. Who's going to have the better Joaquin, career? Uh, Who's going to have the better career? Xander. But uh, – Joaquin Neiman, you know, I, I, I've been on that train for so long. It's at this point, it's just like, I don't care if we're running out of gas or not. I'm hanging, I'm hanging <laughs> on. <laughs> you got to hang on, dude. Hang on for dear life. Uh, yeah. Betting favorite right now is John Rahm at 10 to one. And then wor- world number one, John Rahm, got to preface that. Give him his due there credit. Justin Thomas and Rory McIlroy at 12 to one. Bryson at 14 to one. Patrick Cantlay is at 20 to one. I think that's kind of high considering the fifth favorite to win. I don't know about that. Yep. I, I, don't, I don't like that. Um, Where are you getting these odds? Vegasinsider.com. Let's see. Weber is 22 to one. You know who's pretty good and might be a good, like, low key babe favorite for those who are setting lineups for this week? Tyrrell Hatton. Tyrrell Hatton is at 30 to one. He's played pretty good recently. Uh, he was up there at Hilton Head. Terrell Hatton, maybe watch out. Yeah, I'm, I like him. He doesn't take nothing from nobody. No, I also no. like Abraham Answer at this. He's 50-1. to one. Uh, I mean, I think he's really good. Abraham Answer. I think he was up there in Hilton Head as well. Gosh, what did he miss, like eight greens all week in Hilton Head? That was just ridiculous. And I actually oh. bet on him that week, so that was great. And then he <laughs> starting the next tournament, he was just blowing it away. And I was like, I swear, if he wins this week, and I didn't pick him. Yeah. So, yeah, there, those are some pretty good picks, I would think. Um, also, kind of golf gossip. Did y'all see what Lee Westwood said about the PJ Tour protocols or about, about coming back and playing in the States? No. So, let me look this up real quick. So Lee Westwood is over across the pond. He's over in Europe. And the PJ Tour, if so like a lot of those guys from Europe who play on the PJ Tour, like a Matthew Fitzpatrick or Tyrrell Hatton, they had to come over and quarantine for 14 days because of COVID-19 before they could go and travel and play on the PJ Tour. Now Lee Westwood is still over there, if I'm not mistaken, over in England. And he's going to skip the PGA Championship, which is in a couple weeks. Uh, TPC Harden Park in California. And what he said is that he's not coming over because the PJ Tour lifted those restrictions. You don't have to quarantine for 14 days anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if I said that or not. But he said he's not going to play in the PJ Championship because America does not take the coronavirus as seriously as the rest of the world. And he doesn't Is he wrong? (laughs) I don't know. I think it depends Uh, on what part of the country you live in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just worth mentioning. Again, we don't, I don't really want to get too much. I like this. It. Yeah, I think this is teetering the golf or non-golf. Um, but but he's a big to totally skipping the, yeah, P, yeah. the PGA Championship, and that's the first major of this year, which is kind yep. of a big deal. Yep. Yeah, and how many majors uh, you think he'll ever have a shot to get one too? So that's a – Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, at some man. point he's just going to run out. <laughs> It just sucks that he ran into a man named Tiger. <laughs> no joke. Yep. Because that guy could have won probably at least three, 
if I had to think off the top of my head. A lot of second yep. place finishes. So, yep. uh, so yeah. Scotty, one thing I would like to touch on, I think this was a big low key golf trip weekend for the pod. Oh, yeah. uh, I had a few, few stories from this weekend. Yeah. Let's that, uh, they're pretty good content. So stories weekends now, so that's all I got for PJ tour stuff. Cool. So I kind of was a part of a more or less last minute golf trip. Um, that we thought was going to kind of be a lake house trip, but turned into a golf trip, which is awesome. So, uh, shout out to my buddy, Matt and Kane for hosting us and setting this all up. But we went out to Lake Kiowa, which is North of Dallas. And, you know, we we're going to play 18, maybe 36 holes. And this turned into thir- uh, 54 holes. So up on nice. KJ's level Ooh. and getting it um, in, we're doing two scrambles. Uh, so four versus four in a scramble and one of our guys was showing up late. So we decided, uh, the tournament was going to be at the Kiowa country club, but, um, our first morning there, we decided to take a trip up to Windstar. If you ever get the chance to play scissor tail at Windstar, I could not recommend it enough. It is an amazing course. Um, I was throwing up some content on the, on the Instagram, but, uh, I think Scissor Tail is like a super intimidating name for a for a golf course, and that holds up true. I was hitting – there was one hole I hit it, you know, probably five to ten yards off the fairway and had a full swing with a five iron and made decent contact, and it went a foot and a half. It was like <laughs> the most U.S. Open rough I've ever played. Ooh, so goodness. would definitely recommend that. But um, – on my scramble team, this is a pretty funny story. So there's uh, one of my buddies named Ryan Leggett. Shout out to Squirrel Boy. Um, what is so, it? yeah, nicknamed Squirrel Boy. Might have actually killed a few squirrels this weekend too with the tee shots he was hitting. But uh, on top of that, he did have one of the most clutch chip ins for eagle. Um, nothing like the the heat of a tournament. You're on the back nine of a scramble and you get a chip in eagle. I mean, we were just you know, uh, chest bumping, got, getting lit. It was awesome. Super clutch, uh, led to a victory. Um, I'll post on the, on the Instagram later, but we got a nice bottle of tequila as our trophy. So we have this huge, like vase looking tequila bottle as our trophy. And it was awesome. And I think it's going to become an annual trip. But anyways, squirrel boy was telling me that, um, so he moved into my room that I used to live in in Austin. So it's a house of four guys, live it, uh, just kind of, you know, post-grad, you know, classic setup. And uh, Ryan was telling me, he goes, hey, could you like name the last five, you know, champions of the D- John Deere Classic? And I was like, no. And he's like, okay, well, yeah, there's this guy. I don't know if you, you would know him, but his name's uh, like Dylan. He's a pro golfer. And I was like, Dylan Fratelli? He's like, yeah, 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 him. Uh, he came to our, you know, our house a few weeks ago for a Halloween party. Or like last year. I was like, what? I was like, Dylan Fratelli was at my house? And like, <laughs> none of you guys knew this? And he's like, yeah, I didn't even know that either, man. Like, I actually went over to his apartment. He's got the John Deere Classic trophy in his apartment. I was like, what the f- I mean, I, and he was wearing like a leader, ho- leader hose and drinking beer at my old house, Dylan Fratelli. That is stellar. So there's a stellar. loose connection there that <laughs> we'll see. He said he might pull some strings, see what we can do there. But I couldn't believe that Dylan Fratelli was drinking beers at the house I used to live in with all my friends and none of my friends do it. So um, that was pretty crazy. Dylan Fratelli, man. Yeah, John Deere Classic. He won the People's Major. Yep. <laughs> yep. But uh, overall, great golf weekend. Could not be more of a fan of a good golf trip that I think is turning into an annual event. Um, That's the way to do it. So uh, it was a good weekend. KJ, how about you? KJ had some festivities golf, as well. Yep. Golf adventures. Yeah. This was uh, this actually was planned as a golf trip. Um, we we left at six a.m. on Saturday morning. We drove to Kissing Tree in San Marcos, my neck of the woods. Um, played a course that I had not played Kissing Tree 
that I, I guess it was under construction. It had it closed for a while. Um, I just hadn't played it for some reason because we always played Bandit. Um, but absolutely beautiful golf course. Hill country, uh, great greens. Um, I mean, couldn't recommend it. Couldn't recommend it any higher. It's, it was beautiful. Um, we played two versus two scramble, me and Nate versus Dumpy and Mark. And then we drove to Bandit, played Bandit. Nice. Um, I started off with a 68 at Kissing Tree. Black. Not 100% sure the total score at Bandit, but I felt I was okay. Um, and then we drove to College Station, we rented a house, played some bags pretty late, played some poker, then woke up the next morning um, and played Hebel Creek, and then which is in College Station. Uh, it's a Stratford High School club. classic. Yeah, man. I don't know. I hate that course so much. <laughs> we were on the fourth hole, and Nate and I were – Nate Nate drove, and me and Nate stayed up way too late drinking and playing poker and shit, and it was just terrible. Like, both of us were, were in the middle of trying to get an Uber talking. We could split it. Just leave them with the car. Let's just go home. <laughs> 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 like, we'll just split an Uber all the way back. Uh, but then, uh, then we went to Houston Oaks. This was the bonus round. We got four rounds in. Houston Oaks. Have either of you guys played this course? No, but this is the course that Chris Stroud recommended. So I think that guy knows about golf. Unreal. First off, it was like 275 bucks to play. But we, luckily enough, we, uh, we knew a guy um, who actually I played in the member guest um, against uh, at Hearthstone Country Club. So we just fired off some emails and – he had us out, and I get there. This is a nice place. I get there, and I'm, you know, had a few adult beverages. I was like, I gotta eat some, so I go get a hot dog, mustard and ketchup all over it. I'm wearing a white shirt. I walk out. Everybody's out there, and I fumble the hot dog, and I catch it against my shirt. So now I have like this is my this is my favorite shirt from Kari Cliffs in New Zealand. White shirt, light blue, um, foot joy all over it. And I just dump hot dog, ketchup, <laughs> and mustard all over it within the first five minutes of being at this very nice country club. I also have a picture of – actually a video of Mark walking into the clubhouse. He's got his <laughs> – he's got his rain jacket over his head zipped up so he has just a little hole like this, walking around like this. And he's got a white claw on his head, stumbling in. Right up the main entrance. <laughs> oh my god! Like we're gonna make a great showing here. That you know, video was course outrageous. Was, course was unreal. Like I got a video of eighteen, just beautiful property, like tons of space. Not one of those courses that they jammed eighteen holes into. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's a it's kind of out there for those who live in Houston. I mean, it's a solid probably fifty minute drive, yeah. but it is awesome. Totally worth it. I played it before they redid it, but I went out there for the Big 12 match play tournament about a year and a half ago now, and they love it. Heard nothing but fantastic things. It looks phenomenal. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful holes, too. Like, not just scenic, but absolutely just landscaped perfectly. Nice layout. That's, that was the best, the best course of the trip, no doubt. You know how much I love Bandit. Yep. Also, shout out to McKay. McKay is a, he's a former uh, club golf teammate from Baylor University for me and T-Bone. He ran oh, yeah. into uh, KJ and the crew up a kissing tree. So shout out to McKay because KJ was rocking the three on a par hat, which is clean. It looks awesome. And shout out to McKay. So that was great. That was a hilarious yeah. story. I was confused. I was like, wait, Scott knows McKay, but Kyle doesn't. Because Kyle t and I was like <laughs> reading that in the morning. It was a – long night and I, I was confused but hey glad the uh the sponsorships getting out there a little bit the, yeah the three under merch i locked so. up the brakes we, at kissing tree there's like a you know a little stand right there where they come get your clubs or whatever and i'm we go get our clubs load up and we're driving back past it he goes wait wait i just <laughs> locked up the brakes <laughs> <laughs> so that's again the first 10 minutes of being at this place uh Luckily, that was a different course, but he was like, are you part of the 300 par pod crew? Like, yeah. They said, yeah, oh, yeah no big deal. He it's was fine. more aggressive than I was about uh, wanting a hat. So, 
Good stuff. Yeah. Might be time for another order. Might yeah. be, yeah, maybe. Go get that merch game. <laughs> so, uh, fellas, I think that's all we got. Uh, that we gave in a recap, preview for next week as well, recap on the weekends. I got a listener question, but we can save that for next week since we are running low on time right now. So, uh, KJ T-Bone, is there anything else that y'all would like to add before we close out of here? No, it was a good weekend. I think we nailed it. Great yep. weekend. Hope everybody has a great week out there. Hopefully play some golf as well. If not, then hopefully the golf will be good for the WGC FedEx St. Jude Invitational. So we appreciate That is hard to say. Yeah, it's a mouthful, right? I'll definitely be watching some of that one. I'm going to take – I'm not going to take the full weekend off from golf, but I'm going to take a little bit of downtime. <laughs> <laughs> recover a little bit right <laughs> well we appreciate everybody tuning in uh give this podcast a five-star review a five-star rating and then write us review on apple podcast and then um give us a like tell a friend about the pod as well um maybe we'll be getting into the merch game a little bit i think i've gotten all the golf balls and hats out to everybody um shout out to the sherwin crew the sherwin crew i'll be coming by this week to give you your stuff as well and uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for tuning in, sticking with us this long. Comment below on what you thought of the tournament this week. Give this video a like, subscribe to the, our YouTube channel as well. I'll be dropping a few more of those 18-hole challenges to see how I did my time in Colorado. Maybe we can get some good filming this weekend, boys, if we get out and play on Friday or Saturday. So cool. stay tuned for that. We appreciate you all for tuning in. I'm Scott for KJ in T-Bone. And remember, Little White Ball is live.